interested in becoming a hybrid author but have no idea where to start? In this exclusive multi-part interview series, four successful writers who are combining traditional and independent publishing methods are here to give you all the practical advice and tips on how to be a hybrid author. Don't miss the opportunity to learn from these experts and take your first steps to an even more successful writing career. If you don't know who I am, hi, my name is Caitlin Duncan and I'm a hybrid author, which means I publish both traditional and independent books. Here on my channel, we talk about the writing process and all the bookish things. And this month I am releasing my next non fiction book for authors, The Successful Hybrid Author, where I talk about how you can become a hybrid author and the book includes case studies with four incredible authors from what you're going to hear from today. And as a special bonus, if you pre-order The Successful Hybrid Author and you email me your proof of purchase at this address, also linked in the description, then you will automatically get a free starter workbook on how to become a hybrid author today. And for the month of January only, my first nonfiction book, Take Back Your Book, An Author's Guide to Rights Reversion and publishing on your terms is available for only 99 cents for the ebook. This book is a must read for any author looking to take control over their career. So let's get on with the interviews. I, I would say be aware of like how much money your books are currently making and like what what are your sort of financial goals for, for going hybrid like and, and to be sure that you're not selling rights to a book that is making you a a good amount of money and then you're going to take you know a 50 percent um, royalty pay cut from that by selling the rights to that so having having an awareness of your catalog having an awareness of your top sellers and where they're making money and how how you can sort of um fill the gaps or, or utilize maybe an avenue like for me like mine is the audio books so my books were sitting there in ebook form, in paperback form, and now in hardcover. But there is this sort of gap in the market where I wasn't going to produce an audiobook. And so I've sold the rights for the audiobook so I can fill that gap in, in my market, have a product there. Um, but it's not, it's not compromising the sales of my existing books and existing editions that are making me money. Um, so yeah, just sort of not, I suppose in short, don't just jump at the chance, analyze what is, um, how, how well things are doing and what this opportunity is actually going to bring to you um, and making sure that it's not going to damage your existing catalog by selling that out um, and definitely running the contract by a, a professional person whether that be a lawyer or an agent or, or whoever, um, I wouldn't be signing anything without having a second pair of eyes on it. I would urge everybody to be as meticulous as possible in terms of editing, copy editing, proof editing, beta editing, all of the editing, make sure it's as tidy as possible. I mean, I, again, coming out of traditional publishing in particular, there are expectations in place in terms of quality. So like, making sure if you're writing in the same universe like I do, if you have a shared brand that like the cover art is like seamless in terms of it looks like it belongs in the same universe um, to the same author, like all of that, so, like paying attention to all of those sorts of things. I mean, I'm really, that's the way if you come out of trad that you are really lucky is like you can't be completely derivative, you can't copy it, but you can certainly take your like cover art and layout, for example, as a template. So I kind of like really like the way t the typology is laid out on my YA books in the UK in particular. And so that's what I handed to my first cover art designer. I was like, I just like the way it looks on the back cover of these particular books. So like for all of my indie stuff that's in this universe, let's use that style on the back cover, um, that sort of a thing. Uh, you know, because I have it, like I have the sort of template. Um, so, you know, those are, those, that's how I've avoided making mistakes, I guess I would say, is like the recognizing that there is stuff that traditional publishing does do well, and in my case has done well for me. I mean, my covers on my first series made that series. That's like, people picked up that picked up my first book because of its cover. So it behooves me to pay attention to the elements that were done correctly with that cover, um, as dated as it now is. 
it, and so, you know, that paying attention to like really what's going on in terms of comparative titles, like trends in the industry being staying really like if you want this to be your career, that means it's your job and therefore like treat it like it's a job, which means staying in touch with what's going on in trends, not just in like um, content, not what not just what's popular in terms of what people are reading, but what's popular in terms of the visuals, the cover art, the uploading, uh, you know, uh, platforms, distribution, you know, all of that sort of thing. I, I belong to quite a few like mastermind groups. Like I said, I listen to podcasts, all like I s try and stay in touch with like what's going on in the industry as much as possible. No matter where you are, whether you're indie, attempting to be trad or trad and considering dabbling in indie, um, re I guess my advice is that you are not going to kill anyone. Just play and experiment. I, I used to have this job at 911. And when I was tired and I had a migraine, if I picked up the phone and got the address wrong, you know, typed it in backwards, said something wrong on the air, people could and would die. Um, and this, we're just writing. We are doing the most amazing job in the whole wide world of, of making stuff up or talking about our pasts on the page in order to change the world literally one word at a time and and you get to just play i think my biggest piece of advice is remember to have fun because it is so easily forgotten um i don't know about you but i get really really tight about like oh it's, it's oh, such a hard job i am not digging ditches this is not a hard <laughs> job i am sitting on my butt and i am moving my fingers and using my brain a little bit on the days that i can brain you know um and remembering to play. I have a post-it on my desk and it says, do I like it? Is it fun? If it, and you know, paying taxes is not fun, you know, doing that kind of thing. So, so we do have to do things that aren't fun. But when I am slogging along in a manuscript and I realize I'm not having any fun, how can I change that? How can I experiment? How can I do something in hybrid that is fun for me? And also maybe think about doing something for my agent. What would be what would be an excellent fun thing to play there? Just remember to have fun, have fun and be stubborn. Whenever you have offers come in, know that you do not have to reply immediately. There's this strange dichotomy or strange juxtaposition between everything taking a really long time in trad and then expecting immediate answers on certain bits of it and people to make immediately quick decisions and responses on stuff. And it's just not true. You can take your time. I think I took three days before I signed the contract. Even after um, both sides had had all their lawyers, everybody agree on it, I still refused to sign it the day it came in because I wanted to read it again. I wanted to make sure I was 100% all in and committed. And... I just think that there's this weird, oh, the powers that be have, have bestowed upon me and therefore I must go back and decide really quickly. No, you don't. You're in charge. It's your rights, your intellectual property. You get to set the pace up until the point you sell the rights. And then obviously it's down to the publisher to set the, uh, the pace. But up until that point, like you can hit pause. And I find that empowering, like it brings the locust of control back to you. And it also enables you to have thinking time. And that's really important because it is a lot. This is a lot. It's exciting. It's scary. It's nerve wracking. It's <clears throat> it's legal, it's, you know, all of these things. And sometimes we just need to give ourselves that extra day or that extra two days just to say, okay, 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 is this definitely 100% everything that I want, you know? So yeah, that is, and that's not what I thought I was gonna say when I opened my mouth, but I think that genuinely is the most important part. <laughs> <laughs>